Oh, it has always started with the young people. Serve God while you still have the strength because you too can take responsibility. Not only responsibility for yourself, but responsibility for the world because it's been entrusted to us. You look at the, the other character I talked about. I talked about a young Lot who went with his uncle. Ah. Uh, Abraham, he made choices, but the choices that he made, you need to take responsibility for your choices as well, and you need to make the right choices. I spoke about making the right choices, involving God in all the choices that we make, because whatever choice you make, you are free to make your choices, but you are never free from the consequences of your choices. You need to also understand that even after you have have messed up and you've made the wrong choice, God is not blind to your choices. He will pursue you and redeem you even from Sodom. That's God. And I also spoke of Job, um, I mean Jacob. Jacob, a young man in a rush in his character and he was always putting his hands on things that did not belong to him. But for God to save him, God did not redeem him from Esau, but God redeemed Jacob from Jacob because Jacob's main problem was not Esau, but it was Jacob. <coughs> Some of us need to be redeemed from ourselves because his trouble was that he was a thief and a con man. He was a cheat and he was cheating everybody around him and the boy was outright a con man. He was just a thief, period. Let me tell you, the grace of God found him. Amen. By the time he crossed the Jabbok, uh, Jacob was no more Jacob, but now he was Israel. If God can change Jacob, he can change your life. He yeah. can rewrite the story of your life. Whatever needs to be written, whatever is wrong can be righted in God. Nothing is impossible as long as we place our trust in him. We've got another young character today and his name is Joseph. Allow me that I would speak from the title The Favor of what? Of God. The Favor of God. I want to speak on the title, The Favor of, of God. If I were to define favor, I don't know, maybe because English is my fourth, fifth language, so I always want to define words so I can get it right. You, you get me? You get me? So I know we are on the same page. I don't know, how would you define favor? I just need someone to volunteer. Let me know. What, what, what is favor to you? What, how would you define favor? Special treatment, preferential, privilege, something nice, yeah, okay, that, that, that's involved in favor. Anybody else? Chosen. Chosen, <coughs> unmerited privilege, favor. The Bible mentions right there, if you're in Genesis 37, that when Joseph was born, a young man who was born from the favorite wife, Rachel, he had a coat of many colors. Already Joseph was favored. He had a coat of many colors, but the brethren did not have the coat of many colors. All the other 11 brothers did not have that. It was him only who had that. Why? Because favor was upon him. Let me tell you something right from the onset, young people. That favor ain't fair. Favor is never fair. It's simply favor. It's unmerited, it's unwanted for, but you still receive it. Favor is never fair. That's why it's favor. Amen. I don't know how I could say it better than that. Favor is never fair. Favor is what you receive because it is the grace and the graciousness of the giver that allows you to receive that favor. And the boy is favored right from the onset. But let me tell you something right from the onset. That when the mark of God is on you and favor follows you, it will pursue you all the days of your life. God chooses whom he wants to favor. And that's his prerogative. I can't, I can't change that. God will favor you for, what he, for whatever reason he chooses to. I can't question that and I don't know how to even exegete that theologically. I can't. It's simply favor. Mm. 
It's simple favor, and favor is favor. I mean, you, you could come here with a bag of sweets, and you're giving everybody two sweets. Just about when you get to Dominic, he, you, you start giving her four sweets. Ah, follow the minute. You, you gave all of us two. And now you gave me four. What's, what's happening? You know, I was sitting one day at church. I love this. Don't, 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 don't tell him. Tell him me. I love this. And I'm sitting in church one day. We had this poor that you, you, is it is it port like you? you yeah. All right, you you, you call it what what lunch you call it? Port, port, port. Yeah, port like yeah. All right, we we had it port like yeah. And there's dessert being saved. Yeah. I I get this cake that looks like half a cake. Yeah. <laughs> and the gentleman I'm sitting next to gets this. <laughs> and he gets ice cream <laughs> and I look at him and I look at the lady <laughs> and I look at my plate I look at him, I look at the lady and I look at my plate by this time they're all getting uncomfortable <laughs> I said hold on brother I don't understand what's happening here uh, are we still on the same port like thing or there's a different thing going on here? <laughs> and the brother who was the other side said he laughed and he said, That's the wife. I said, Well now I understand the wife the faith. I understand the faith. I said, brother, you can eat your cake and ice cream. Don't worry, I won't be jealous no more. <laughs> That's faith. I got a half a cake, uh, what seemed to be like a cake, an image of a cake, but he got the cake and the mother of all cakes. Because that's faith. You can't explain it, it's favor. Let me tell you something Joseph was not only favored, but Joseph was a dreamer. Young people, you ought to be dreamers. This is the time to dream wild. When I say dream wild, I say dream big because the, the, the older you get, the more limited your dreams become. Because the more responsibility you have, the more restricted you are to dream. You can't dream big no more because you've got a little one who can't allow you to dream too big because you've got to be looking after them and you've got to put them first before yourself. So you've got to start dreaming big when you're young. You've got to aim high, aim higher and higher because your dream will take you to where you want to go. And that dream, as long as it is in the will of God, God will make, it, will make sure that your dream will come to pass. Joseph was a dreamer, but the fact that he was a dreamer did not mean that give him license to share with everybody around him his dream. Because his big mistake was every time he would dream, then he would tell his brothers. So, you see, his dream was other people's nightmares. Not everybody who smiles at you likes you. Not everybody who is around <coughs> you is for you. Because many a times your dream are sometimes someone's nightmare. You've got to know who to share your dreams with. I'm sorry, I just got to tell it as it is. Because there are some folk, even as we see in church, you think that they're for you, they're not for you. You tell them your business for prayer, <coughs> and it's all out there for gossip. Hello, somebody. Oh, I'm not here, but let me just say it. You say, brother, pray for me, I'm struggling. And the next thing you hear, your business is all out there on Facebook. I say, hold on a minute. I, I know I told you, I never told anybody else. But why is my business gone public? Not everybody who smiles at you likes you. Your dream can be somebody else's nightmare. Dream, dream big, but tell your dream to Jesus. And tell your dream to the right people. Because not everybody who sees you dream big likes what you're doing. You hear them say, oh, do you think that's really going to work out? Oh, girl, come on. Don't flatter yourself. Listen. 
I believe that all is possible with God. As long as your dream is in line with the thoughts and the will of God, God will see it through. I'm talking about the favor of what? The favor of God. Look at Joseph now. As he grows, the father sends him to the field. I, I will not take too long, but I, I, I want you to, 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 to concentrate on this because I'm talking about the favor of God. The father sends him to his brethren and he says to him, listen, I want you to go and check on them. But I don't want you to only go and check on them, but I want you to give them something to eat. I want you to take them something as you go along. And so Joseph goes there. As, as, as he was, he's still dreaming. Joseph is going oblivious to the fact that his brothers don't like him. But he still goes there singing as everything is honk, as if everything is honky dory. He's going out there, he's singing, he's loving him, and he gets to where they normally where they are normally grazing, and then he finds they're not there and he says, Wait, wait, have you seen my brother? Have you seen my brother? The brothers have moved from another place and he goes there. But as he approaches them, he hears this that yonder comes the dreamer. They don't call him their young brother no more. To them, he's become that wild dreamer. To you, you still love them as your brothers, but the trouble is they don't love you as a brother. They are seeing you as a threat to the inheritance because the court of many colors said a lot of things. The court was saying that there's favor upon this boy that means when the father dies, he will leave him as a ruler of over everybody else in the house. That's why they hated the boy. There was a firstborn Reuben, and there was Judah, there was all these other guys. And so why this boy has a coat? Because when he has a coat, that means that he will be in charge. But you see, his dreams had already started telling him that he is going to be bigger. His dreams had already started telling him that their sheep were bound down to his sheep. Uh, and he had several dreams, but he told them to his brother. Uh, and the brother were not happy. The brethren were not happy. His father kept it in his heart, but he rebuked them in front of the brothers because he saw the jealousy in their eyes. Watch this. As Joseph approaches, he said, here comes the dreamer. The dreamer comes. The boy gets there. He speaks peaceably to them, but they, they don't speak peaceably to him. What do they do? They take him. They want to kill him. Their intention was to kill him. But you see, what they wanted to kill was not Joseph. You didn't hear me. Yeah. What they wanted to kill was not Joseph. They wanted to kill the dream in Joseph. But if you read your Bible carefully, you'll understand that they were not after Joseph. It was the devil after Jesus himself. Because he knew that if he had destroyed Joseph, there would be no prince of Egypt and then Judah would never have been seen. And then Judah would never have been the father to Perez. Perez would never have been his father to Obed. The Obed would never have been the father to Jesse. Jesse would never have been the father to David. Jesus, who is the root of the tribe of Jesse. You've got to understand that it was the devil coming for Jesus himself. Because the threat has already been issued in Genesis 3.15. He shall pass your head and you bruise his heel. So now he knows that this is the lineage to come. So he will do anything possible to thwart the coming of the Messiah. Brethren, let me tell you something. Young people, as long as you keep on dreaming and as long as the devil is alive, your dreams will always face opposition. As long as the devil is alive, your dreams will always face opposition. But it doesn't mean that your dreams will never come true. Amen. Keep on following the dream. Pursue God. Love God. Your dreams will come true. I'm talking about the favor of God. And watch this. They wanted to kill him. But because the favor of God was with Joseph. I love that. 
the brother Reuben said, no, 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 don't kill him. There will always be a Reuben who will save you from extinction. I'm saying that the favor of God was with him, even though they threw him in the pit, he was still having the favor and the covering of God over him. There are some of us who think that when we have the favor of God and we are called a chosen generation and we are called the remnant, that means that we will never experience trouble. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Loving God is not an insurance policy against problems, but it is an assurance of the presence of God even in the problems. Yes. Let me come again. I said, loving God is not an insurance policy. <coughs> you can love God and still have problems. Daniel loved God, but he still went to the lion's den. The three Hebrew boys loved God, but they still went to the fire. But he promises his presence that even if you go in the fire, in the pit, in the, in the lion's den, I will be with you. Because wherever the presence of God is, there is protection. Hello? Young people, you've got to understand that I'm not pursuing money because money is not my primary aim. I'm, I'm pursuing God because when I'm in the presence of God, money follows. I'm not pursuing provision because in the presence of God, there is provision, there is protection, and plenty more of what you need. Pursue God. Joseph, even at his young tender age, I believe they say he was almost about 17 around. <coughs> he was a teenage boy. About your age, round about. Uh, and, and, and the boy was a teen. Imagine as a teenager, he's thrown in the pit. His life is at stake. And they decide to sell him for 20 pieces of silver. <coughs> And guess who they sold him to? The Ish, the Ishmaelites. But who are the Ishmaelites? The Ishmaelites are the descendants of Abraham's misdemeanor with Sarah's maid. Those are the ones they sold him. Beware of the things that you don't deal with. They will always find a way of tripping you later on. Oh boy. Watch now, they sell him for 20 pieces of silver. But I know another somebody who was sold for 20 pieces of silver. All right. Ah, and that's Jesus. Joseph was rejected by his brothers. Jesus came unto his own. And his own received him not. Sold for 20 pieces of silver, Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Mercy. And now he is sold into captivity as he goes to Egypt. He is not just sold to any other. You see, because the favor of God was upon him. You see, as a slave, if you, if you read the history of the, of the slaves, you find that it was a terrible thing to be a slave. Go, go down to, um, to Ham. The head that museum, what, what was his name? William Wilberforce. If you look on the walls, you'll find out how much they were selling slaves for. It was terrible. You were sold for almost nothing to be just a butler. Really? Okay. A cook. Low jobs, low light jobs. And you think to yourself, Really? Lord, why did you allow this? But the Lord allowed Joseph to be sold as a slave. Because God had a purpose for his life. He didn't need it. God had a purpose for his life. Some of us are bitter because of what we go through. But let me tell you something, brethren. We go through what we go through because God choreographs events in our lives mm. for the greater good. Yes, amen. God took him to Egypt. Mm. When he took him to Egypt, he's not just because the favor of God is upon him. This is what I love. Mm. Because the favor of God is upon him. They did not just sell him to any ordinary Joe blogs out there. 
when the favor of God is upon you, even as a slave, you know, you, depending on the home that you went to, you knew that if you were picked by a ruler, you would eat good food. Oh God. So he was picked by one of the best. And so as they pick him up, Joseph quickly, he's in Potiphar's house. He calls, he moves quickly from the pit to Potiphar's house. And as he works in Potiphar's house, Joseph did not forget his morning <coughs> prayers. He did not forget his afternoon prayers. He did not forget his evening prayers. Come on now. He did not forget the things that he was taught back home. Never forget the foundation that is set by the godly parents in your life. Yes. It don't matter whether you go off to uni, take God with you. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you get a job and you've started with a good company car and, and a company house, whatever benefits you have, take God with you wherever you go. Don't leave him because he says, my favor is upon you because the favor of God was upon him. Listen to this that Genesis 39 says to us. Then in Genesis 39 verse 2, even though he was in Egypt in captivity, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was prosperous a man. Oh boy. But you see, Lord, the boy is a slave. But you're still saying you're with him. The presence of God will take him. It will follow you. It will pursue you wherever you are. It doesn't matter whether you're in trouble, whether you are, are doing well or you're not doing well, the presence of God is always with you to protect you, to cushion the pain. Amen. I know you may be going through much, but the presence of God cushions the pain. Amen. Amen. He was a prosperous man in the house of his master. Can you imagine as a slave he starts making money? He didn't hear me. <laughs> he, he starts making money as a slave in the master's home. He, he, he is elevated from being, most probably he was a cleaner, he started as a cleaner, he's moved from a cleaner to a butler, from a butler, now he's become the one who is chief of the home. He's the one telling other slaves what to do. The favor of God is upon him. When the favor of God is upon him, God will elevate you, use your enemies so that they can be your footstool, so they can work for your good instead of working against you. you didn't hear me? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. He will direct your path. Listen to this that happened. And you see, the master even saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that He did to prosper in His hand. Let me ask you. A, let me ask you a question. When you go to your workplace, or when you go out <coughs> with your friends, can they see that the Lord is with you? Here is a question you don't need to answer. Can your neighbor see that the Lord is with you? Because it's not so much about the campaign leaflets that we drop in their doors, you know. It is our conduct and our character and our behavior that they see more than they hear what we say to them. How do we treat them? How do we talk to them? How do we relate to them? How do we see their needs and how do we meet them? The community out there is waiting. You know, I was talking with the owner today, this afternoon, we were laughing and saying, the common man, the common Joe Blows doesn't care much about religion. Because everybody got a car. As long as you got a good credit rating, you can get a house. It doesn't matter what kind of a job you get. You can get a house, you can get a car, you can get anything you want. So what's the need for Jesus? But as we build relationships, mm, yes. as they see God in us, they will begin to open up and trust us and tell you, you know what, I'm having trouble sleeping, you know. I say, man, man you, you drive Mercedes and BMW. He says, man, I've got all that, but I have no peace. Mm. 
I only sleep two hours a night. What's troubling you? They open up. Do you mind if I pray for you? Oh, oh yes, please pray for me. Yes. I've never seen anyone who refuses prayer. Very rarely you pray for them and God answers. Man, we, we, we're having a campaign at church, dude. I mean, when you're free, you mind attending one visit. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll finish work at five. What time does it start? Seven o'clock. Okay, that's fine. I'll be there to pick you up. Mm. But the trouble is, people can't see Christ through us because we are not meeting them. Mm. We simply sit in our own churches. We do nothing. We recycle each other every day. We argue over the same things every day. And we don't get anywhere. We argue more about methodology than the message. That's another story for another day. Let me leave you alone. You see, when people don't have work, they have more arguments. Yeah, because there's nothing to do. Because when we have nothing to do, we squabble among each other. Amongst each other. But watch this. The favor of God is upon Joseph. I love this. That even the, 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 the master saw the favor of God upon his life. Can the community see the favor of God on us? Can they see God in us? Oh, here we are. We are going on Wednesday. We want to go and see that place that pastor announced. I pray that we get it. And I pray that it becomes a center of influence. And I pray that all of us can volunteer at least two hours a week for that place. Yeah. Let that not only be a center of influence, but a beacon of hope mm -hmm. for the whole community. Yeah. Let them see Jesus through that place. Yeah. By the time you invite them to come here, they've already seen Jesus there. Mm -hmm. They don't need much. Mm -hmm. Oh, Amen. come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, he saw that the Lord was with him. Mm, yes. And Joseph found grace mm. in his sight. But watch this. Favor always attracts problems. Mm. Don't get me wrong. You can have favor, but favor always attracts problems. Because there are always those that are against them. Especially the devil. He's seen you preach too much and save too many souls. So he will go after your reputation. Mm. Yeah. Send you something to bring you down. Yeah. Whether it's a lady or a man. Send you something, a temptation. Or send you some addiction that you, you will have to deal with. But I'm telling you, as long as you stick with God, God will stand up for you. Amen. Here mm. comes Potiphar's wife. Yeah. I mean, Joseph was a good mm. young man, lady. Please, let me just tell you, he was handsome. I I'm talking about a young lad, you know, he had the eight pack, and, you know, he, 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 he you know, he, you know what I'm talking about? The brother was just fine. Mm. So don't blame Mrs. Potiphar too much, because she couldn't help it. The young boy, the boy was single, he was fine. And she converted him for herself. But watch this thing that Joseph does. She wants to sleep with him. But Joseph says, No, my Lord and Master Potiphar gave me charge over everything in this house except over you. And why should I do such a thing? front of my dad. Let me tell you something, young people. Do you know that Joseph's secret would have been safe with Potiphar's wife? She would have never told anyone. They would have never been caught. But the trouble is, if Joseph was going to sleep with Potiphar's wife, his destiny was going to be forfeited in that house. You've got to be faithful when people are looking, even when they're not around looking. Be faithful to God. He said, why should I do such a thing? In front of my God. Young people, let me tell you something. There's going to be a time when all your friends will try and ask you to prove your coolness. 
by having a little spleen. Your coolness is not tested by a spleen. You love God and you know that. A spleen has nothing to do with the same. A spliff has nothing to do with your, with your salvation. Because everybody wants you to fit in. Let me tell you something. When you are chosen and peculiar, your job is not to fit in, but to please God. Yes. You can be queer and old in front of everybody else as long as God is pleased with you. Everybody else might as well go and do what they want with their lives. But I know that when God is pleased with your life, everybody else will be pleased. Yes. Except the devil, of course, and those that he uses. Mm. Seek to please God, and everybody else will be pleased. You see, back in the day, I used to try and do stuff to please the brethren. And you know what? I'm over that now. I've come to a stage in my own Christian work where I've realized that I can't please everybody. Mm. If I can please God, then the brethren will be pleased. If those that are not pleased with me, fair enough. I can't do anything much about it. Mm. I can only pray for you and leave you to Jesus. But watch this. I'm talking about the favor of God. The favor of God will also attract opposition. But the favor of God will attract trouble. But the favor of God will prosper you. He prospered in, 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 in Potiphar's house. So, Understand this point very clearly before I go to my close. That Joseph, Joseph, Joseph's destiny would have been forfeited in Potiphar's house if he would have slept with his wife. Watch that you don't forfeit your destiny. God has greater desires for some of us. Don't forfeit your destiny on a smoke or on a spleen. Don't forfeit your destiny on a small thing. Move and dream higher. Move around about those temptations. Uh, ask God to give you strength to second bend those temptations. Look at Joseph. You know what Joseph did? He ran. You see, some of us are very, I, I've never known a generation that loves reasoning, such as us and maybe the generations that are coming after us. We love to reason a lot. You know, we want to reason things out. We want to make sense out of things and do. <laughs> there are times when you don't need to make sense of things. Leg it. Yes. Just run. Yes. You can't out-negotiate the devil. He's been around for 6,000 plus years. He's smarter than you and me. Without Christ, we can't match him. We are no match. Run. Run away from the location of temptation. As he runs away, BBC. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There's a gentleman, 17 years of age, about 18, somewhere there, maybe 19 he was by then. And they look, they describe him, his pictures all over the news, in the newspapers. He's been on the run. He's tried to, to rape a Potiphar's wife, but then he escaped. But when she screamed, that's the story she made up. And Joseph sees that on the news as he's passing by. He sees it through the window of a pub, wherever he sees it. And then he turns himself over to the police. He says, I'm Joseph. And put him in prison. Sometimes you have to go into prison for things that you did not do. Sometimes it's not the literal prison, but then the prison of life will place you in a place where God wants you to be, not where you want to be. And now Joseph is in prison for a crime he did not commit. I mean to tell you, brethren, sometimes you have to ask yourself, what did Joseph do to deserve this? He didn't do anything to deserve it. Joseph didn't do anything to deserve it. Let me tell you something about life. Life just happens to all of us. Sometimes you lose a loved one, not because you've done anything to deserve it. You just lose them. That's life. Life happens to all of us. I know that doesn't make for good English, but it makes good theology. Life happens. Mm. It simply happens. That's life. The devil is still on this earth. The great controversy is still raging. People will die. Life will happen. You lose a loved one. The husband will leave. He would want a divorce. He leaves it. You, you are left there with the kids. You left the children. You're a single mother. Not because you chose to, but just life happened. 
You are there stuck with an exam. Everybody else has passed the A-level, but you're still trying to rewrite and rewrite two, three times until you get it. Stay there. Stick there until you make it. God will come through. Mm. Don't give up too easily. He's in prison, but I love this that the Bible says. The Bible simply says again, Martin, as he's in prison, it says the favor of God was upon Joseph. I was somebody. You know, Joseph was meant to be a prisoner, but the prison guard gave him keys. Whenever the prison guard wanted to go and watch football early, he would <coughs> give Joseph the keys. He said, Joseph, make sure the prisoners are all locked and you lock yourself in. I'll get my keys in the morning. That's how trusted he was. Mm. Can you be trusted, young people? Can they know that when they leave you with their stuff, they will still find it tomorrow? Can you be trusted, even though you are not in a trusted place, like prison? The boy was trusted because the favor of God was upon him. Mm. You see, what they did not know is that when they put him in prison, they were training him for the palace. Oh boy, you didn't hear me. I'm going to close now. I'm on my home stretch. I'm going home. I said when they put him in Potiphar's house, what they did not know is that they were training him for the palace. The Bible says that it didn't take long. The butler and the beggar came into prison and they found him there. They had dreams. But you see what happened is that when they dreamt, then Potiphar, I mean then Joseph interpreted the what? The dreams. Imagine this that God does for you. God uses your gifting to open the way for you. Because whatever God will never use what you don't have, He uses what He gave you to open the door for you to get to your destiny. That's what God does. If God has to use your music talent, He will use that to open doors for you. If He has to use your preaching talent to open doors for you, He will use that. If He has to use your singing voice, He will use that to open doors for you. If He has to use your people's skills to open doors for you, He will use that. God used what Joseph knew how to do, interpreted dreams. And the next thing, He is invited to, to, to Pharaoh when Pharaoh had a dream. He caused Pharaoh to have a dream so that Joseph would be invited. Let me tell you, brethren, that Joseph moved from Pete to Potiphar's house to prison, but because he stayed with Jesus and the favor of God was upon him, he moved to the palace. Stay in there and stick with Jesus because God will elevate you even when your haters are around. Don't kill your enemies. The Lord will put a table, will lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Oh boy, come on. Don't kill your enemies. Stay there. Stay there. <coughs> Stay there. Don't kill your enemies. Be with them. Your enemies will be all right. They will see you prosper. They will see you where you are. Stay with God. Stick with Him. And watch this. This is what God does. Look at this. God invites Him. This is my last point I'm going to make. As he's invited to Potiphar's, Potiphar's, um, I mean to, to Pharaoh's throne, he interprets the dream. And as soon as he interprets the dream, guess what? The Pharaoh says, Can we find another man so faithful and responsible like you? You are now the prince of Egypt. You are only lower in ranking to me. Because I'm the king, but you are the I'm the pharaoh, and you are the the prince. But you are the one who rules over these people. When the favor of God is with you, He will elevate you. But watch how this thing works. The brothers they had a famine back home, and guess what? They had to come to beg Joseph. They had to come to beg Joseph for food. The same Joseph they saw, they came to him. Oh boy, can I close now? I'm saying the same Joseph they sold for 20 pieces of silver. It's the same Joseph they're coming with so much silver to buy food from. Oh, you didn't hear me. But Joseph then when he revealed himself to them, he said, What the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. Come on now. Now let me tell you something, child of God. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will mean it for good. God can turn your situation around.
go ahead so that you can be a savior for everybody else. Amen. He sent them ahead so that he will save them from the famine to come. But I know somebody else huh, who was not sold for 20 pieces of silver but 30. He was not sold for 20 but 30. He came unto his own and his own rejected him. Ah, oh, they, 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 they rejected Joseph but he, he came unto his own and they rejected him. He was sent even to the second death so that whatever the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. He died on a Friday, come on now. And he died so that he could save you and me. He died so that you and I can have life. He died so that he will save you and me from sin. Oh boy, I love this. Because when he died, he died of a broken heart. But he woke up with all power in his hand. He had power over death and power over the grave. And he says, death, where is thy victory? Oh, 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 oh. He says, death, where is thy what? Where is thy sting and grave? Where is thy victory? I'm telling you, brethren, Jesus came and he conquered. He died. He conquered and rose again. Because he leaves, now I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all my feet is gone. Because he leaves, I can never be in starvation and I can never live in famine. Why? Because Jesus, whatever the enemy meant for good, God turned it around. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Because the favor of God was upon him. I'm asking for God's favor today. Is there anyone else who wants God's favor in their life? Stand with me, I'm going to pray. I pray for God's favor over our children. I pray for God's favor over our young people. I pray for God's favor over our elderly. I pray for God's favor over husbands. I pray for God's favor over wives. I pray for God's favor because I know I know everybody who comes to me. The other day I preached and said, oh, Pastor, you're preaching about favor. That sounds all very Pentecostal. I said it sounds very whatever you want to say, but it's in the Bible. Favor is there. You can ask for it and God will bestow his favor Amen. on you. There is no way you can go without the favor of God. Amen. Because when the favor of God is upon you, he will protect you. He will provide for you. He will be your shield and buckler. Father, as we stand today, you know our lives are not as perfect as they meant to be. You know who we are. Just as we are, we come with to you, O oh Lord, without one plea. We thank you, Jehovah, for your power and for your grace and mercy. And I pray that, Lord, uh, when you bring us here tomorrow, that we will be in one peace, but above all, I pray that you place the favor, your favor upon our lives. Place your favor upon the young people, place your favor upon the elderly, the husbands and the wives, the children, and everybody else here, oh Lord, I pray that you place your favor on us. It is my sincere prayer, Lord, that if there be anybody who's sick here and not here as well, I pray that you heal them in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, as we go about our business, we may be revived at the end of it all. I pray that, Lord, our prayer lives may be revived, that when we pray, you may give us your favor. That when we work for you, you will place your favor upon us as well. I pray for the favor of God upon our lives. And that the young people will also dream dreams. Even uh, the elders will dream dreams. I pray that, Lord, our dreams may never be thwarted by the, the happenings and the doings of man. But I pray that, Lord, you will always favor our dreams. And that, Lord, as we dream big, you will set us high above all the other people so that they will see Jesus through us and not, 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 not the other way around. I pray that, Lord, we may be beacons of hope, beacons of light in the communities that we come from, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, that will be beacons of light, that the world can see you through us. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Come tomorrow and preach on the subject scandalous grace. Scandalous you find out a bit more about it tomorrow. All right. God bless you.